Hello, Octomori is back because we're playing the original Splatoon because I have my Wii U hooked up. <laughs> so I thought, you know, why not? It's here. So I am loading this with a new account that I use for Wind Waker. <gasps> This is so nostalgic, <laughs> even though this game didn't come out that long ago. I used to drum along with this when I waited for the game to load. <laughs> Mori Clone Army, what, on the, the Wii U Plaza? Wada Wada Plaza, is that what it's called? I don't remember. Oh yeah, this is happening. Look at these, these graphics, which looked really good for the time. Spin. Um, we are going to be in Ika Musume. And uh, do I do I want one that looks like me? Because I'm very pale. Usually when I've been playing the story mode in the other campaigns, I go with the darker skin. But I guess if I want my Agent 3 to be canon, I'm going to go with what I picked originally. Which is this. My god, I'm so pale. <laughs> but, you know, that's how it be. I don't tan, I burn. Yeah, it's only Splatoon 3 that... Um, stops delineating between boy and girl, and it's just style now, um, which is cool. I like that, you know, because Inklings and Octolings are literally gender fluid when you think about it, since you can ach you can change your uh, style at any time. Anywho, hey you, yeah you, wanna be the freshest squid on the block? We'll teach you some funky fresh moves on the way to Inkopolis. Oh yeah, this is happening. I'm squidding before I, they told me to squid. I'm ruining the immersion. Oh, the camera sensitivity is not what I have it in Spoon 3. So it's like, oh, I'm turning so slow. What do you mean, eight years ago? Doesn't sound right. Come on. I can't squid roll. I'm pretty sure I don't actually have to pop all of these. They're not gonna gate me out of the tutorial, but it's good to get comfortable with using the gamepad again. I remember when the test fire for this game came out, and I felt so clumsy playing it. Oh man. Oh, this is not the jump button I want to use. Oh, weird, weird. Oh, that's, that's gonna cause me to go off some cliffs, I'm sure. Sorry that my fat head is blocking some of the screen. Look at this strange device. And no one knew how to play this game during the test fire. It was pretty fun. I remember a lot of roller jousting. I'm trying to tap B to climb faster. That's not the jump button. But yeah, uh, in this game, during the test fire, there was a lot of, like, two people with rollers would go directly head-to-head. -head and collide and they'd both blow up. Roller jousting. I should have connected my Wii U to the internet, but I don't think I have. So I can't actually do online. Sorry. Although I bet the lobby is filled with hackers. Also, I don't have a Nintendo network ID associated with this account that I'm using. I'd have to load my, my main account, which the story mode's already completed, so. The Goyles! Hold on to your tentacles! It's Inkopolis news time. Newsflash! Newsflash! What is it? What is it? Inkopolis' great zapfish is finished! Wait, seriously? If it isn't recovered soon, are we gonna lose power? Oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Probably. I wonder if it has anything to do with that UFO crash. Sounds likely to me. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. Stay fresh. Ikayoroshiku. Welcome to Inkopolis. This is the plaza where all the freshest folk come to chill like krill. 
Most Inklings here are obsessed with the hottest sport in Inkopolis. Ink battles! This crazy tall building in front of you is Inkopolis Tower. It's the city's most famous landmark. There's a lobby on the first floor of Inkop Inkopolis Tower for online battles, but we're not going to do those today. This is the Booyah Base, which, by the way, is a brilliant pun and localization. Cheers. A shopping mall for all your Inkling needs. You can buy all kinds of fresh gear and weapons to use in battle. But check it, the staff in the shops can be a snobby bunch. They won't serve you if they don't think you're fresh enough. Battle Dojo is on the second floor of that building over there. Check it out if you want to battle your friends one-on-one -on -one and sharpen your skills. I have never used this mode. You might want to steer clear of that back alley. It smells a little fishy. And next we have... Huh? Who's that creepy old dude? He seems like the type who could get you mixed up in something dangerous. Whatever. Why don't you just head to the lobby in Inkopolis Tower? That's where you can get your splat on. Oh man. It's gonna take a sec to get used to these controls again. It feels weird without the, uh... The Miiverse posts, you know? Mom left us at Best Buy. Feels so strange going back to 8 BBM before Big Man. Look at all these lack of polygons since since they've recreated this in Splat 3. It does look really empty, doesn't it? I'm gonna go in the shops and get yelled at. 8 BBM before Big Man. Hello, hello. Oh, I'm afraid you're offline right now. Come back when you're connected to the internet. I can't even get yelled at you? Never mind. Oh, well. Oh my gosh. Wait, is it Splatoon 1 or 2 that has FU Tuesday? I think it's Splatoon 2. Never mind. Yeah. I think it's Splatoon 2 that has FU Tuesday. Um, please tell me somebody knows what I'm talking about. Because I don't think I don't think I can explain it. Meow. Well, pal, you've got to work on that positively clawful level. For reals, go to the lobby and play some turf war battles to level up. Once you've done that, try visiting the weapon shop. Catch you later. Thanks, Judd. Hang on a sec. Options, camera sensitivity. That's a little better. I'm a little more sensitive. Uh, okay, okay. That feels like a little better. I'm gonna have to turn it down, but... Wait, who's dancing? Oh, th this these are the dancers you were missing? Sorry, I, I, I guess we can only really look at their backs. Look at them go. You know, when I first saw this in the direct, I never thought I would love it so much. And look at me now. I'm an octoling. What happened? I'm like, oh, cool, a new IP. You know, but I don't really like shooters. And it's online. I don't, I don't know about that. But then I played the test fire, and then they had my soul. The Octarians are coming! No! Oh, uh, I guess I lost my cool for a minute there. I'm Captain Cuttlefish, leader of the legendary Squid Beak Splatoon. That look in your eye, it's the look I've been looking for. The great zapfish that powers Inkopolis has been squidnapped. Nobody believes me, but it's the work of the Octarians. I just know it. They want revenge for the Great Turf War of 100 years ago! I've been keeping an eye on them this whole time, of course. But they stole the Great Zapfish right out from under my nose! Please, you gotta help me rescue the Great Zapfish! So... I'm gonna take your silence as a yes. Starting today, you are Agent 3 of the new Squid Beak Splatoon! 
This is your brand new hero suit. It'll help you fight the Octarians. What a great fit! For a hand-me-down from Agents 1 and 2. Now let's go get those Octo Jerks! I'm counting on you, bucko! I don't know if that's consistent with the voice I gave him before, but you know, that's that's what he sounds like now. Hello, Rui. I hear we are years later. Weird, right? Just like streaming the other games, uh, I'll let you read the dialogue at the bottom. Because I'm gonna find it too distracting, I'm sure. Man, the jump button is not what I want it to be. I want a squid roll. That's not a thing. Oh, there's sunken scrolls, too. I don't remember where anything is. Gosh, it feels so strange playing this now because I remember, again, my first foray with Splatoon. I was very clumsy with it. You know, A, because I don't play shooters. It's not really a genre that captivates me. And B, I never really played anything like it before, you know, with how it controls. So uh, it took a bit to get used to, uh, of getting used to. It's a shame I don't have any sort of recording of my initial forays into this game, because, boy, I'm sure it would be like night and day. Oh, I broke the shield, sorry. I'm curious for folks here in the chat, how many of you have played the first Splatoon before? I know there's probably a lot of people that, even if they're fans of the series, started with the second one because, you know, who had a Wii U. It looked different! Hmm, I can't put my finger on it. Maybe I got a haircut? Oh, that didn't work. I guess I could just climb up this way, huh? Also, hello, Min. How are you? First Crackers is coming out on the Switch, by the way. On, was it August 24th? In like two days? Dang. Despite your relative lack of interest in the series, you played all three games. Oh, I'm surprised. I appreciate you giving it the old college try, even if it's not your thing. Like Katamari. You were charging ever since the Wii U demo. I have played with Claire on Splat 1 here. I have been sniped by them in the face. They are very powerful. Is there anything else around here? It's highly probable I've... Oh no, I got the sunken scroll. I was gonna say it's highly probable I've gone past it, but no, I got it! I was just so distracted thinking about first crackers, you know. I remember one thing that helped me get better at this game was actually watching a speedrun of it um, and sort of seeing how someone who is a pro at the game, how they maneuver around. And that sort of gave me an idea of, okay, how I move more effectively, what's the best way to fight enemies. I just tried to squid roll. I guess that probably goes for a lot of games. If you want to improve your technique, you can watch a speedrun. I've learned some interesting tricks that way. Since time immemorial, a rare type of electric catfish known as the zapfish has been prized by Inkling society as a source of energy. In fact, the entire city of Inkopolis is powered by a single 100-year-old great zapfish. Happy birthday, buddy. I wonder how long they live. Hopefully a very, very, very long time. It would be bad if your source of power just up and croaked, you know? Who feeds the great zapfish? Does it have, like, a vet that looks after it? Asking the real questions. Speedruns make you feel amazed and outclassed. 
find when I see somebody employ really interesting techniques, I think, ooh, I want to learn how to do that too. Like, a lot of how I learned to move in this game was by watching speedruns. Um, like, how to cross the ground quickly. Which is still handy, even if you're not speedrunning the game. You know, when you're trying to outmaneuver opponents in turf or salmon. Uh, maybe I should stream as little buddy. Even though salmonids didn't exist in this game. Oh, he's stuck. Yeah, I can get that. I can see how Splatoon 2 would feel disappointing if it didn't feel different enough to merit a sequel. I like that they leaned more into the single player in Splatoon 2. Because um, I'm sure myself and a lot of people weren't expecting this game, this series, to have such interesting lore, at least for me. I love the lore, I love the designs, the music, the, the culture that they've created. I'm fascinated by it. Interestingly, when I, again, first saw the Splatoon Direct... Oh my god, there's nothing above there, because I can't get up here. Um, or not the, not the, rather, the Direct Splatoon was introduced in. And, you know, I thought again, oh, that's cool, it's a new IP, which is really striking in this day and age, but it's a shooter, it's not my thing. I wasn't really sold on the design of the Inklings either. I thought, like, wow, they're kind of ugly cute, I guess. But I've really come around to it. I think it's a great design. Like, just the, the tentacle hair and the, the pointy fangs and everything. It's fun. But especially the weird sea creatures. It's like two, but I'm gonna get it anyway. The weird sea creatures in Octave Expansion. I want more of that. I hope they do more of that with the, uh, the Side Order DLC whenever that comes out. I just want more of this world and its bizarre inhabitants. Anyway, I guess I can talk for a long time about this one too. <laughs> An entertainment store was going out of business, so you bought this, Watch Dogs, Kirby's Epic Yarn, and Mighty Number no. 9 for like $40. And Splatoon wasn't used, wow. Oof, mighty number nine, though. I mean, granted, I haven't played it for myself. You know, I don't want to cast dispersions on something I haven't played, but... Everything I've heard about that game suggests it's very rough. And just a big letdown. Pew. Pew. my microphone because I eh, eh, there we go I keep almost hitting it or rather I keep almost hitting the mute button there we go I have to be careful because it's not even a button really it's just um it's like a like a, a touch point you just gently tap and you get muted and there's like there's no tactile feedback you just drag your finger across it you the $40 was the discount due to you taking Mighty Number no. 9 off their hands. But please, we'll pay you. Just get this cursed object out of here. We Octarians dwell in a world deep underground. The individual caves in which we live are connected by a network of transport devices known as kettles. Wow, you learn something new every day. Like, how can you look at this world building and not be charmed? I, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure you can't. I'm sure that's possible. But if you're me, you can't look at it and not be charmed. Look, that, that tentacle has a little mustache and a mortarboard and a tiny tie. Your Wii U never froze until you played that game and afterwards it froze in a bunch of games. Mighty number no. 9 is cursed. Yeah, wow, it's really like, please take this off our hands. We need to be free of this cursed object. I've heard this this song in particular described as burp step and now I can't unhear it. They didn't have to go so hard in making this game's soundtrack so... I'm not gonna say inscrutable, but strange. Maybe a little inscrutable, but I'm glad they did. The K 
can't say it's nostalgic, right? Like, eight years ago. <laughs> that was like last year, come on. It's all coming back to me. Oh, the classic Inkzuka! See why they they nerfed it? Play it lasts a long time. Right now, there's a gun, and why they they banned in universe? They banned all the original specials. They're too strong. I mean, specifically, it's because they talked about or Splatoon 2. They didn't want getting a special to feel like it would make or break the entire match, so they didn't want them to be quite as overpowered. I'm glad they, they brought back some of the Splat 1 specials, just not quite as... beefy. Are the Kraken and Killer Whale in story mode? Uh, I don't remember. The Kraken, I think you actually can only access with the green squid amiibo. Because there's certain story mode variant missions you can unlock with the amiibo. Um, and the uh, the green squid ones, I think, involve using the Kraken? Maybe? I don't actually have the green squid. That was the one I never got. I say never got as if I have any Splatoon amiibo beyond the original Inkling Girl and Inkling Hawaii. I don't. I've not, in, not gotten Callie or Marie. Or Pearl and Marina, or the the, uh, the ones that go come with us, Splat Two or Splat Three. Uh, hang on, I'm gonna stretch my hands. Ugh. Stretch. You can't see my hands on camera, but I'm stretching them. This seems to be an Octarian assault vehicle, but it doesn't appear to have an engine. The big question then: How does it move? It's frighteningly clear that the source of Octarian power lies outside the realm of established science. In universe, um, Octolings are generally more technically binded and patient and curious than Inklings, just as a culture. Inklings are a bunch of impulsive dopes. Again, that's the generalization the game goes with, just because of the circumstances surrounding their particular societies. Anyway, remember this guy? Wait, we're going in reverse? Sort of. Man, this this feels wrong without like the uh, the boss intro music from two. With all the wah! I liked going wah! Hey. How would you forget the weird legs, the little doll legs? They're a charm point. Kiki. Kiki, that little leg. Stuff is so satisfying when it blows up in this game, isn't it? It's like popping bubble wrap. A little more visceral. I gotta say, the graphics still hold up pretty well. I know, you know, people like to be like, oh, Wii U, weak system. But I think it still looks pretty good. Rest in pieces, again. Oh, those poor legs. <laughs> kind of weird playing as an inkling with the, the classic Twin Tails look. The best! They have the great Octo weapons on their side. At any rate, good work, Agent 3. Keep it up. 
It's a long road to the Great Zapfish. Anti-Octopus Weapon Blueprints. Designer, a Moses Schellendorf. Ammonites, Buya Base, first floor, Inkopolis 11-1. Well, that's right. You unlock weapons for use in the single-player campaign by beating bosses in story. I mean, sorry, weapons through single-player um, for the multiplayer. You know what I mean. Maybe I even said the correct thing initially and I just screwed it up. Yeah, I gotta upgrade my gear. Uh, let's see. Hang on. Oh, seekers. There we go. There's the speedrun strats. Um. Also gonna do that. And ink tank capacity. Yeah, let's get burst bombs. Okay. Sorry, I'm looking down at the gamepad. It must feel very rude. Uh, it even displays on the main screen. I was just looking down at the gamepad like a fool. Oops. Cool. Oh, yeah. Gosh, remember Seekers? Remember my pal Carrie likes Seekers a lot. The, the progenitor to the curling bomb. But you can't cook them. And they go much further. They don't slow down like curling bombs do. Did they recently update Splatois? Um, the uh, new catalog is going live at the end of the month. Like the, the new season. Um, there's a big run scheduled um, I think on the weekend of the 2nd. And uh, the next Splatfest is going to be... Who would make the best leader, Shiver, Fry, or Big Man? And I really want to see Fry get a win because she deserves it. But I have to go with Big Man. I feel like Big Man would be the least fight. Like, he is the one who... Uh, let me try that again. He strikes me as the one who would want power the least. But he would probably do the most with it. He seems the most confident. Like, if you forced his hand. There's nothing secret beneath this, right? No, now I have to wait for it to come back down. Boo. Ugh, oh, come on. Come on. I could've just thrown myself off and respawn. Make sure I have the correct bomb. Yeah, this is a lot harder if you're not accustomed to the game's controls yet. These have secrets beneath them. Secrets? No. I've seen some people complaining, saying that Shivers teams are always winning the Splatfests because people are picking the, the team strictly because of Shiver. I don't know if that's true, but I've already seen people say, like, I'm not even gonna bother with uh, the deep cut splat fest. It's just gonna be Shiver again. But I know in my heart of hearts, Big Man Sweet! We've been saying it since the, the test fire. Big Man Sweet! I don't think I would trust Shiver or Fry as the leader of anything. Like, they feel too... Shiver seems like she would just get too big for her britches. She would overestimate her abilities and underestimate her opponent. And Fry just seems like she would spend, like, the budget on snacks. Big Man, I think, would not want to be thrust into a, a position of responsibility, but he would take to it the best. Spear on strats. Ow. Pain strats. 
Oh, no, that's not worth it. Uh, I got a couple of them. That's something. Hello. I'm curious, does anyone here who plays or has played Splatoon, if you've ever voted in a Splatfest, have you ever at any point based your vote solely on the character who's representing the team? I have not, personally, because I'm always like, no, I have to pick the one that I believe the most in, not based on the character. And it's hard to pick a favorite anyway. The Department of Energy has announced that further declines in the availability of electric power are likely to occur in the near future. With the underground domes also deteriorating rapidly, the future does not look bright. Look at that ding dang octopus press conference. Look look at his his like side part or middle part hair. Sweaty businessman octopus tentacle. Oh, that's not a burst bomb. Can't eat that, okay. Do I need to upgrade the, the burst radius for these burst bombs. It's so tiny. You have more integrity than that. Good, good. But yeah, it is horrifying to leave the thing behind. That's an Octo Striker! Beware the Ink Strike! Get out of the way when you see it coming! I remember the Ink Strike. I remember, uh, I was gonna say Black Belly Skate Park, but... No, this is, a, this is Urchin Underpass. Like in Mario Kart. Well, okay, it's not strictly Urchin Underpass, it's the start stage, but I think it's connected to Urchin Underpass. It's that skate park look. I think I can just off my rocker now. Whoa. Okay, I'm being way too casual about this. Gee, Mori Focus. How embarrassing would it be to get splatted? I mean, I'm sure I'll probably walk off the stage at some point. Let's be real. We know what I'm like. In Mario Kart 8, um, Urchin Underpass is one of the battle stages. Well, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. But I've almost never streamed battle mode. Somebody wants to do battle mode. I mean, I get it. I think racing is more fun as well. Sometimes, sometimes you want to throw bombs at each other. It's not just me. Come on. Yeah, the battle mode. The oft-forgotten battle mode. Hello. So round. I just kinda wanna smack its belly to see if it makes like a, a boom sound. Oh. Goodbye. Zapfish, ahoy. Oh, there's like a lip I have to jump over. Whoops. Oh, you mean the bizarre scoring method for battle mode? Do you prefer the old system where, you know, once your balloons are gone, you're out? Versus your points getting halved? It is a little frustrating, but understandable when one has a substantial lead, and then right near the end, you get taken out. You know, especially the coin battle mode where it's just one hit and you lose half your loot. And it's like, well, I'm not catching up. Okay, it would be really funny to see DJ Octavio in Mario Kart. <gasps> Octolings! Look at their huge bouffants. Big hair. Well, these are some stylish ladies. Alas, my hair is not nearly that fluffy. But I'm also very lazy when it comes to hair care. I wash and brush my hair, and that's about it. Oh, jeez. Do I 
many of you have more elaborate hair care routines? Some people I know are very meticulous about it. But I've just, I don't know, I can never be bothered. Hello. I don't even have to fight them, I just go past them, but it's more fun. So I need to find the sunken scroll. Here we go. Hello, goodbye. Kind of a shame they don't have uh, different weapons like they do in Splatoon 2. They've all got the octo shot in this game. Oh. Your hair looks like a rack lion. You're honest. Oh, you got the Switch Online expansion pack. Ooh. You know, I'm more tempted by it these days. I mean, it's still expensive. Paradise Lost by Octolangelo. <laughs> I like these clownfish. I like that the, the serpent is represented by a, a devilish looking squid. Is that too saucy for Twitch? No, it's classic art. It's different. Well, do you have the, the sort of hair that gets really frizzy when there's any sort of humidity? It just gets flat really fast. Which is obnoxious. Like, I try and wash my hair, like, only every, like, three days-ish. Just because it's not good for your hair to wash it all the time, because it strips it of the oils it needs. But then I feel like it gets really flat right away. Like, nah, I, I feel like I need to wash it. I don't. I resist the urge. I just, I don't know, I feel grody. Maybe just because it's summertime, too. Oh, this is, this is some good music. Absolute clown shoes, and I mean that in the best way possible. called Tentacular Circus. One of the songs in Splat 1 or 2 is called Tentacular Circus. Oop. That almost ended poorly. Ow. Stop! Oh, don't remind me of the haircuts. I feel like I got one not even that long ago, but I already feel like I kind of need one again. I don't know. You ever just look at your hair and you think, I want to do something with it? Just just for enrichment? Like, you just get so restless that you just think, I need a change. I crave a change. Wait, I hope I didn't go past the scroll. I may have. Oh, well. It's not, not up here, is it? No. Sometimes I think I want to dye my hair pink, but I have to bleach it first. I don't want to do that. No. Maybe it's over here. I hope it's over here. Otherwise, I missed it. There we go. Okay, everything's good. If I don't get them all, it's gonna bother me. You voluntarily chose to be bald to not have to deal with it anymore. Now that's a sensible take. Just cut out the middleman. Literally, I guess. This scroll was found in a deep rock layer. Its age estimated at approximately 2,000 years. It details the ancient turf wars of the time. It seems the basic 4 versus 4 battle format had already been established at this stage. All these ancient bamboozlers and Judd? Question mark. I mean, there is only one cat. This is before a little Judd. Before Big Man. That's right. I was I was gonna say sorry about the Windows desktop noise, but you wouldn't hear it. So never mind. It just bothered me. 
Anyway, before Lil Judd, before Big Man, before Mr. Grizz, before Little Buddy, before Off the Hook, bizarre to contemplate. Man, this is really getting me excited for side order. I hope it's good. I mean, of course it'll be good. I trust the Splatoon devs. I guess my expectations are quite high because uh, Octo Expansion just surprised me with how great it was. I want more of that. More, more challenge content. More backstory. More, like, strange and weird and kind of morbid, slightly macabre, you know, not, not grim dark, but, like, Octo Expansion got not dark, but, I'm trying to think of, like, a, a better word than dark or gritty, because that just, you know, feel, I feel like it has certain connotations, which isn't quite what I'm trying to communicate. Not edgier. Mm, I can't, I can't, you know what I mean, though. They got extra weird. Oh man, I think I needed one of those. Oh wait, this will work. Thank you. There we go. There we go. The Dark by Splatoon standards. That's a better way of putting it. Look, I want more of that. Yeah, Dark biz and Bizarre. I love that kind of stuff. Get weird with it. If that's the kind of art I want to make. Just unapologetically weird. Filled with strange sea creatures. I mean, strange sea creatures are optional, but I think they, they enhance the experience. I'd say I'm sorry I'm not acknowledging Captain Cuttlefish's riveting dialogue, but... We're not here for you, Cuttlefish. I'm sorry, Grandpa. We're here for your boyfriend. I don't know who started the trend of, of old man Yaoi <laughs> in Splatoon 3, but I'm behind it. Good for them. Heavy, somber, uncanny. I think those are all excellent adjectives. I think that's what I'm trying to convey. Yeah, somber, maybe. The terrifying biology of the inkling. Strength. Can leap up to five feet. Brain. Simple and predatory. Bones. None. Eyes. Can spot prey from a hundred yards away. Defense. High pressure, high capacity ink sack. Ugh. Disgusting. Look at that vile creature. Can you believe they have three hearts? When did you get here, old man? You're welcome. Okay, there's one more somewhere. Uh, let me see. Where have I not been? Some are very obvious, I'm sure. Do squid kids have beaks? That's um, what their their fangs are, their pointy teeth. That's their beak, and how it manifests in human form. Oh, here we go. It's a waste. Hang on, let me let me upgrade uh, my gear. Um, uh, I'm gonna up the blast radius. Cool. Um, and let's up the ink tank. There we go. more bizarre bleak world ending villains in in splatoon nintendo does good apocalypses when you get right down to it i sent out that seeker and then i'm like wait no i want i want these power eggs so i'm a greedy slob so it takes a lot of ink jeez 
haven't even pointed out how nice these backgrounds are. Even the, the stage backgrounds in Splatoon are just wonderfully strange. Any secrets around here? Do Octolings open jars? I wonder if they like to, like, Octolings like to sit in jars now. Like, if they, they enjoy uh, cramped spaces. That's interesting to think about. Oop, uh, uh, no. No. Oh, fine, I'll go this way. Go, 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 go. Good, good, yes, good, I'm good at this game. <laughs> what do you mean, old man Yali was not in your things, Mori says bingo card. Ugh. I was gonna say you haven't seen the post, but uh, yeah, you, you, you don't play Splatoon 3. Every, everybody has collectively decided that Captain Cuttlefish and DJ Octavia are like bitter exes. Which I think is a hilarious interpretation, and I am 100% behind it. Because then it just adds this, this air of petty drama to everything that's going on. Those itches. That's right, Mari just saying things as part of the stream experience. Like, I know there's a clip of me saying, like, what was it? Waluigi, Slidely Whiplash, and Dirk Dastardly, my favorite polycule. Or Dick Dastardly, sorry, not Dirk. Who's Dirk? You know what I mean. Nox, hello! Well, allow me to educate you all on uh, the existence of Old Man Yali, I guess. Splatoon has some good memes. Like, Splat Tim. He does it. That one will never die in my heart. Split Splat Tim has been going since the first game. This was the genesis of Splat Tim. He does it. I didn't get the sunken scroll. Oh, I missed it. Well, that's fine. I will look for it later. <laughs> oh, you calling Nox out? Look, Nox is simply curious, alright? Yeah, in Splatoon specifically, I'm, I'm sure it is a long established thing elsewhere, but Splatoon specifically. To the boss kettle, oh boy. What's gonna try and kill me today? I don't actually remember. I don't remember what any of the bosses are. The dreaded Aqua Nozzle. Ah, oh, you were lurking, and then I said... I said the, the sleeper phrase. Oh, this thing. It's kind of pointless. <laughs> Hang on, let me use a seeker to go two feet. I'm just going wah. 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 This thing looks like it would honk. Look at his little shoes! Were there ads for Splat One or Splat Qua? Um, when you say Splat Tuan, you, you mean this one, right? Because I see, you know, TWO in there. So I, I just have to make sure, because this game had the You're a kid now, you're a squid now, you're a kid, you're a squid, you know, like it's deliberately very aggressively 90s in its marketing. And I know Splat 2 and 3 have ad campaigns, but I couldn't tell you what they were. Because I don't watch TV. In fact, I am allergic to advertisements. I, I just, I, I I take poison damage. For every second I'm listening to some sort of advertisement, I take, like, 300 ticks of poison damage. Splatoon, okay. Um, but yeah, I'm, I know there, there were, like, commercials and stuff, but I don't know what the American ones are like. Have you seen clips of the Japanese commercials before? 
but I don't know how they advertise the other games in, uh, in English. Maybe someone knows, but clearly not as mimetic as your kid now you're a squid now. Also, I did it. Goodbye, strange. Oh, the eyes make me think frog. But the nose, the schnoz, I don't I don't know what it is. Yeah, you know, it is targets in, actually. But much better to fight. <laughs> Man, I don't have a little buddy in this game. I don't have a salmonid. I don't have Kazooie. I don't know if she's a buddy, but you know. Scritchy. Scratch. What's that sound? Cuddle fish. Blasted radio. Must be broken. You're doing great, Agent 3. Don't let up. Thank you. It's like a swampy metal layer kick koala. Yes. Oh, cool. I got another blueprint. Is that a freaking e-leader? Disgusting. Disgusting. Get that out of my face. It's not really a memorable boss, no, but I do remember getting splatted by one of the orbs that shoots out. I have a distinct memory of that happening. Using the zapfish to revive the great octo weapons. Oh no. I'm asking a little late, I know, but how are folks doing tonight? It's a little dry, unfortunately. Maybe it's just reading cuttlefish's dialogue. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Oh. Oh dear. Hey. Did I mute myself in time? I think I did. Sorry if you heard me sneeze. <laughs> that's that's the downside of being an octoling on stream, is that now you can see me scrunch up my face when I sneeze. Oh, listen to that burp step. Hello, Miss Goodbye, Miss. Oh no! Oh, you almost got me killed, Frando. One of the octobrush loadouts in this set was your favorite, and it's never come back. Which one? I don't remember what the octobrush kit had in this game. I feel like one of them had splat bombs in the inkjet. I think the other one might have had beacons. I know. They're adding um, the Octobrush Nouveau to Splat 3 with the, the next season update. And I was excited for it because the Octobrush currently has suction bombs, which are good, but the zip caster, which I'm not really keen on. Although that said, I think the Octobrush uses the zip caster better than um, a lot of other weapons do. Oh, uh oh. Like, I know the Luna Blaster has. Bye! The Luna Blaster has the Zip Caster, which is just a terrible decision. The Luna Blaster, my baby, I love it, is just too slow to make use of it. There's what I'm looking for. So, uh, I don't know why they decided to give it that. Um, but anyway, I wanted another Octobrush kit that doesn't have the, uh,. The, 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 the zip caster, but it's got. What does it have? I don't remember. It's got beacons and I think the ink storm, so it's a support based weapon. Which is fine, but I'm, I'm a very aggressive player. I don't like my support. It's nice that they're adding another tri-stringer kit. Although, I think I kind of prefer the original. And another blob blobber kit, which is cool, but it has the angle shooter! I feel like maybe if you gave the angle shooter like just a little more, I don't know, ink efficiency or damage or something. I've tried to utilize it. I've, I've gone into matches with the, the goal of like, okay, 
I'm gonna be as annoying as possible with the angle shooter, but even then, it just feels like a drop in the pond. Also, I'm, I'm sorry for those of you watching who have no interest in Splatoon recreationally, I guess is the word I'm gonna use. And you're just here to vibe, and you're like, what on earth is Mori talking about? Yeah, the angle shooter. One of these days, they're gonna make the angle shooter really good. Waiting for it to happen. I tried. I tried to use it. The most tragic weapon kit is the Slosher Deco because of its angle shooter zip caster combo. Is the music battling my voice? Oh, I can turn it down. Let me do that. Thank you for letting me know. I want it to be a pleasant audio experience for you all. But also, I, I my microphone's... Eh, let me scoot. Is a, a little further away just because... A, I don't want to bonk it with a gamepad. Um, but B, I also need it out of my way for my face tracking. Yeah, so I can make faces. That's that's what we're here for, right? Oh, jeez, stop. Stop. Asking them to stop always works, right? Ah, hello, Taito. Buenos dias. Come on, stop. I was about to say, oh, genki this ka, but no, no, not, not the right language. I have to think about it. I got your hopes up with blah blah, but sorry. It's like sprinkler, angle shooter. I think, man, what is it special? I don't know what it's special is. Look at these jellyfish, they're beautiful. Twice a year, the Inkopolis Collection Fashion Show captures the hearts, minds, and wallets of the city's youth. Is there no room in these creatures' minds for anything but battle and fashion? Look at them, gorgeous. They're so tall though, they're kind of disconcertingly tall. Like, are there just really long jellyfish who are models? Or can the jellies we see in the plaza extend themselves for the purpose of fashion photography and just choose not to most of the time? Do I sound different? Hang on. I'm going to move my mic a little closer. Ugh, I'm trying really hard not to hit it with the gamepad. That's the awkward thing. Um, just because I need to move the gamepad around a lot for this game, and I don't want to hit the desk. Squid Beacon and Kraken was the Octobrush you used. Oh, that's a good combo. You like beacons a lot in theory? They're really handy to have, but the problem is is that if you use beacons, no one else will take advantage of them. Like, if your weapon kit has beacons, no one- it feels like no one uses them except you. Like, when I see a teammate using beacons, I wish I could just go up and shake their hand. Thank them personally. Thank you for using my beacons. It's nice to reminisce about the original Splatoon. I still, like, eight years, that doesn't sound right. The, the Wii U was just, you know, a couple years ago, right? Hello, Kaito. Welcome and thank you. I guess I'm. I'm, um. What is the word I want here? Not breaking character, but playable octolings are not a thing in the first Splatoon. There are enemy octolings, but they don't look like this. They all have big, poofy, bouffant hair. I'm like spoiling the game, but not really. You know, it's gonna be weird now playing Splatoon 3 and having to get used to uh, B as the jump button again. What? Uh, good. Very good. Oh man, I gotta shred all those guys again. Whatever. You know what? Heck. Being neat and orderly and getting things. 
speed run, speed run, speed run. My seekers go out slower than curling bombs, and I don't like it. Oh no! Oh. Yeah, the new Octobrush has beacons and ink storm. It's support based, which is very handy. Don't get me wrong, I like having support oriented teammates very much. My own playstyle, I am very aggressive, so my preferred kits have uh, aggressive sub weapons in particular. Especially when you have something like the Octo Brush, um, which is. Granted, for as far as, like, shorter range weapons go, its range is pretty decent. But, uh, i rather have bombs in my weapon kit. I get, like, back yet. I will take that. You are less of a liability when you play support. Eh, it's fair. And support-oriented teammates, I think, are very important to have. Like, again, I love it when people put out beacons. It makes me very happy. Thank you. Yeah, a loadout focused on support is definitely a good incentive for not going bonkers. If I play as a weapon that has a more support-oriented kit, I have to remind myself, like, Mori, no. You're not meant to be out in the front lines. There's a balloon there I could have broken. Oh well, it gets to live. Also, something else I was thinking about what they're adding in. I think it's their. It's concurrent with the big run that's going to be in September second that weekend. Um, they're adding another Grizzco weapon. I don't know what it is. They they tease the little image of it. I think it might be a splatling if I had to guess. Because it reminded me of like the the Hydra Splatlings uh, engine, but it could also be dual leaves. I don't know. I wonder what a Grizzco Splatling would be like, or Grizzco Dualies. I'd like to see a Grizzco roller that has like an agonizingly long wind-up time, but then it just sends a tsunami of ink across the stage. Oh. Uh, hunting horn users, they're the ones that uh, do buffs in Monster Hunter, right? Heralded by loud explosions, the great Octo weapons quickly stormed the Inkling Central stronghold. Victory for the Octarians seemed all but certain, but due to a plug being carelessly pulled from its socket, their hopes were dashed. Oh man, look at that evidence bag. Disgusting. Ugh. Delicious. I've eaten octopus, but I don't really... I don't feel good about it. Octopuses are very intelligent, but I've tried takoyaki before. I like calamari. Yes, actually, there are new slop suits. They've got, I think, camo prints. And some more, more stuff you can redeem your scales for. Uh, here we go. I was thinking about Katamari before stream. I almost debated playing Katamari music before stream. But then I thought, no, I want something oceanic. Here they come! Octolings ahoy! Ladies! I can't believe I've gone, like, an octoling stage without saying ladies. What are you doing? Their, their octopus form looks so goofy, doesn't it? Their, their swim form, I guess, is the technical term. You had fried calamari for dinner tonight. Delicious. Calamari, I've heard, can be a very polarizing food, and I can see why, because if it's prepared improperly, it's revoltingly chewy. If it's prepared correctly, though, when it's just light and crispy with a little bit of lemon, delicious. 
Oh man, I really want calamari. Man, what are you done? It's like eight o'clock at night, and now I have a craving. Well, nothing to be done about that, I suppose. You know, I'm not a huge fan of seafood, just because I haven't eaten a lot of seafood. My mom never liked fish very much. Um, so, even like when it comes to cooking fish, I've only done it comparatively rarely um, compared to other meats, even though I cook all the time. So I'm not well-versed in preparing fish. Um, I like fish. I'm not a huge fan of seafood, though. I think just because it can taste bad very easily. Yeah, I wish this sunken scroll. I need to find it. Where have I not looked? Oh yeah, when you live in a huge seafood locale, whereas if you're in a, a landlocked place like me, oh there, I think that's it. Um, Seafood tends to be, you know, it's not ever gonna be super fresh because you're in that, you're in the prairies like where I am, and it's gonna be a lot more expensive. So it's like, eh. there's a reason they call it seafood because in the wrong hands it becomes seafood. See now I feel foolish for reading that out loud because it, it doesn't work. Uh, Vocally, it needs to be read. <sighs> Lady Luck shone down on the Inklings, and historians today agree that the Inklings' victory over the Octarians was mostly due to their superior number of limbs. Look at that cat. He's so big. Like, just because these Inklings here are more... I'm going to say realistically proportioned that Judd looks so... He looks like a guy in a mascot suit, doesn't he? Look at these bamboozlers. I saw a post once saying that, like, I can't believe Captain Cuttlefish, you know, helped win the Great Turf War with a bamboozler of all things. And someone said they nerfed it after what Cuttlefish did with it. I like how, yeah, they're realistically proportioned, but with the cartoonish green hair. Have you all seen... Um, I think it might be in the Sunken Scrolls in this game, and if not, there's concept art of it. Of um, So Inklings can't master the squid-to-kid transformation right away. Um, from birth, they can only maintain the squid form, and it takes till about their teen years before they can maintain the kid form. And until then, younger Inklings will often occupy this strange, dopey-looking hybrid of the two, where it just kind of looks like like half-melted child. Can I just throw a bomb from here? Good. Oh, that works. Okay. That was initially a sarcastic good, but I didn't realize there was a rail down here. So actually that works. Um, is there anything I, I need to do here? No, okay, I need to go here. Maybe the bamboozler was a state-of-the-art weapon back in the day, but new technology has made it outdated. I think that's probably the most likely explanation. The bamboozler. I haven't used it very much in Splat 3. I feel like maybe I don't like the kid it comes with, I don't remember. But I got pretty good with it in Splat 1 and 2. Splat 2 especially, I think. Um, Splat 1? I got really good with the, uh, the squipper, but for some reason, ever since they added the charge storage mechanic, I don't know, I feel like I've never quite gotten that mojo back. I think with the charge storage mechanic, I jerk my shots too much. And then I miss. Like, I try to do the thing where I quickly stick my nose out from cover. 
So you shoot someone before they can see the, the, the laser sight on them. But I'm just, I'm too jittery and inelegant with uh, the charge storage mechanic. I did not use the charge storage mechanic. I have to train myself out of it. Imagine a gun with the speed of the blaster, but without the blast. The bamboozler is not that slow. The bamboozler is actually pretty fast, which is why you really need to be steady with it, but that's why it can be so effective. I remember in this game, and Splatoon 2, um, with damage up and... Um, Man, what's... Oh, dear. Uh, whatever its equivalent was in Splat 2. Uh, I can't remember. Whatever they, they used, it replaced with Intensify Action. But anyway, um, the Bamboozer, you could buff it to a point where one hit would do 99.9 .9 damage. Like, by increasing a weapon's attack with damage up, you could never reduce the number of hits you need to splat someone. But you could make it so if your opponent had any damage whatsoever, one hit, a little graze from the bamboozer would splat them. And you do passively take damage when you're standing in uh, enemies' ink. So that would render it really easy to splat someone with the bamboozler. But it was not a strategy I did myself because it just rankled me. Mostly seeing E-leaders that had damage up stacked. I hated it. it. Just annoyed me. Very petty grudge against E-leaders. Anyway. The first battles of the Great War ended in victory for the Octarian forces. The diligent Octarians easily dominated the Inklings, who were unable to wake up early enough in the morning to defend themselves. But can you blame them? It's like so early. I like this, this ink wash. Like, like the kind of technique you would do to sort of mark the size of your, your catch. In Japan, at least. I don't know, I've never gone fishing. I've been fishing in Persona 5. Why does every game have, like, a fishing minigame? Actually, how come Splatoon doesn't have a fishing minigame? What am I saying? That's Salmon Run, never mind. A petty grudge against equipment? I like hearing people's petty grudges. I mean, it's- it's- I've made no secret of the fact that E-leaders rankle me. And it all stems back to this game, with people stacking damage up. And thus mitigating what's supposed to be the E-leader's weakness, where it takes a very long time to charge up in order to splat someone. But if you stack enough damage up, then you can splat someone without a full charge. And as someone who likes short-range weapons, I just, ugh, got on my nerves. But I mean, you know, I, I don't actually hate people who can be ears. Whatever. Peace and love. No, peace and mud. Peace and mud. But no, no, peace and love. Peace and love. The most involved fishing minigame of all. You know, you can add fishing minigames to your, your JRPGs when you've made it so the fish are aggressively fighting back. Like Animal Crossing with the fish, I'll try and fight you. You have to punch a shark. What am I doing? I should shoot this. There we go. Oh yeah, Salmonid Smoke Yard is coming back. Um, which, uh, I think it'll be better now that you can throw eggs. It's boy, high tide and smoke yard can get really rough when there's so many eggs just on the other side. You, you've played salmon in smoke, uh, smoke yard, you know what I mean. Oh man, I just, I see Slay the Spire mentioned in chat. And I'm like, oh, I was thinking about Slay the Spire the other day because I had, I had, um, don't judge me, don't judge me. I had, um, Inugami Korone on in the background while I was doing art the other day because she was streaming Slay the Spire. I love Slay the Spire. 
watching her made me think, oh, I want to play Slay the Spire again. Sometimes I, I was thinking, you know, if I can't get Splatoon to work for whatever reason, I'll play Slay the Spire, but I feel like that would bore people. Anyway, I need to actually read the Slay the Spire message once I'm off these ink rails. Otherwise, I fear I may flub a jump. I don't think I don't think it's cringe. Uh, I don't even like using that word, but I just feel like I don't know. I feel like I'm gonna be judged for it somehow, which is weird. This is this is my own chat. I'm VTubing right now, but I don't know. I guess. There are people that, you know, you ever meet someone who, like, it feels like their personality is to hate things. There are people out there who hate VTubers, especially the Hollow Live ones. And, like, I don't... The only one I'm subscribed to is Korone, and even then, I just, I don't, like, watch her. Um, I have, sometimes I put her on the background. I like Korone, but anyway. With the creatures of the surface driven to extinction by rising sea levels, the ancestors of the Inklings were free to haul their ten-legged bodies up onto the abandoned land. This is how the Mollusk Era began. It's kind of what their their awkward prepubescent stage looks like. Kinda. I know it's I know it's riffing on a piece of artwork, but that's also kind of what their awkward pre prepubescent stage looks like. Anyway. You're not playing Slay the Spire anymore, but when you was, you never took Wraith form. You remember what it used to be back in the day, and you deeply dislike the redesign it, it's got. It's OP now, but you don't like what it does compared to the silent. So you see it and go weh and ignore it. You know, I just don't want to play Slay the Spire. <laughs> Good. I, in my defense, I was reading the chat for that one. <laughs> I mean, plus it wasn't in the stage. So, like, who cares? I could throw myself off as many times as I want. And Cuttlefish has to watch. Um, hang on. Let me look at the map real quick and see where... Maybe a stage is down here. It's a little outcropping in the end here. We have so many people trying to use the lifts in Salmon and Smokeyard and accidentally killing one another. Well, that's what this little outcropping is. Yeah, that's always the worst feeling. When you accidentally pull the lift out from under a teammate, like, no, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. But yeah, Korone's cute. I think, partially for me, like, I don't watch, like, um, like, just chatting streams. If you've ever seen a, uh, like, a VTuber stream labeled Zatsudan, that's, like, just chatting in Japanese. Oh, well, it might be down here. Um... I only really enjoy gaming-related content, um, so that's why Korone appeals to me. She's got a fun way of talking. She has a peculiar accent. You know the image I'm talking about with the, the in-between stage? Excellent. I'm hoping the Sunken Scrolls will actually show, like, that awkward prepubescent stage so I can share with the chat, but if not, I'll, I'll find it on Wikipedia or something because it's very funny. Also, oh, man, Bluefin Depot! I remember Bluefin Depot. I wonder if they'll bring this one back. Back in the day, I used to put splash walls here, like this spot. So when people would swim up, they would just dive into the splash wall. And it used to be in Splatoon 1, splash walls would splat you instantly if you swam into them. Now in Splat 2 and 3, you, 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 take, you take quite a bit of damage, but you won't die immediately. Ikambokam was a mental scar of yours for a few weeks. It's just the way she talks, it's charming. I hope I can be that charming too. You've seen some Clutternade highlights and she cracks you up. Right? Right? Enjoyable. Oh, hey, this map is never coming back. No. I mean, um, a friend had brought it up the other day, how the maps... Dak, if you're here... This is Dak. Uh, 
I don't want to steal. It's not like I'm stealing his, his thought, but mentioning that um, the uh, the maps in Splatoon 3 don't feel as interesting compared to some of the maps in the first game in 2. And I was thinking about it, and I thought, yeah, but some of them feel kind of sterile. In the sense that I don't feel like I'm trespassing somewhere. Like, I feel like I'm trespassing here. I feel like I'm trespassing in Black Billy Skate Park. Or, um, like, Arowana Mall. But stuff like Scorch Gorge and, um, uh, Mincemeat Metal Works and all that, I just... I don't, I don't feel like I'm infringing on someone's property, you know? Like, get out of here, you crazy kids, and you're in battles. And I think that's part of the appeal for me. That it's missing. It's like playing Smash Bros. with the stage hazards. I like the stage hazards. Fox only final destination is dull. I know if, if you prefer it that way, I'm not judging. But me personally, I find that playing field kind of dull because you're you're stripping some of the personality out of it. Oh, you haven't you haven't seen the Horone mimicking the Ikumbokum from from the Mumble Tokens and Banjo Kazooie. Charming in a Mori way. I'll take it. That makes me happy. I want to be charming in my own way. I have my own unique vibe that you can only get at my streams. Or something. This is the only existing photograph of the legendary Squidbeak Splatoon. The young man folding his arms appears to be the leader. When this picture was taken, the great turf war had been raging on for over a year. There he is, Captain Cuttlefish. And then behind him on the left is a Moses Schellendorf. It's Sheldon's grandpa. I don't know who the, the uh, two inklings on the right are. Clearly, they did not influence history, so who cares about them, right? And then we got Judd looking really peeved with the airplane ears, as my mom would say. Why does Judd look so mad? Okay, I got a little distracted talking about VTubers. Also, hang on, I'm gonna upgrade my gear. Uh, let's up the rate of fire. Why not? And... Eh, why not? Um, what are your thoughts on fishing minigames? Do you like fishing minigames? Do you dislike fishing minigames, or do you just not care? I... I'm not really keen on fishing mini games, just because it feels like busy work. If it's like Animal Crossing, I don't mind, but I'm not the kind of person who gets excited at the prospect of fishing mini games. That said, you know what? Fishing in Persona 5 is okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not high art, but I need to go this way. I was kind of hoping there'd be a path there I could take, but no. You know, I'm not a huge fan of the Smash Ball either. I feel like every time it shows up, it just interrupts the flow of battle because everybody's gonna go ham trying to get the Smash Ball. And on one hand, I like that they they sped up the uh, a lot of the final smashes for Ultimate, but on the other hand, yeah, you lose a little personality that way. I guess I wish some of them were just copies of one another, you know, like the Zelda characters. Pew. It's Cloyster. Make the fishing minigame stupid and bombastic. That I could get behind. Now, where does Big the Cat's fishing fall on this scale? I should be acknowledging this... 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 Clam abomination. I'm, I'm, hang on, I'm. Abalombination? No. I'll work on it. I think I gotta shoot its. Yeah. Oh no, I think I have to ink turf so it gets stuck. I think, I think, I think. There we go. 
There we go. You know, I never tried the fishing in Final Fantasy XIV. I played many hours in that game, although only up to the first expansion. But I never tried fishing. I think a lot of, like, I'm gonna say MMO busy work. Um, and I'm just blanket putting crafting under that, uh, that statement. MMO busy work, I feel, makes me really restless. I can see how one would find it very zen or relaxing, but I, I just, I feel like if I try and do it for too long, my brain feels like it's trying to claw out of my skull. Yeah, I'd say Big's fishing. Mediocre is a good word for it. They try something unique, and I can get behind that. And I think Big the Cat is just an inherently kind of funny character. Not a scourge, but yeah, they're... I don't think they're the highlight of anyone's Sonic Adventure playthrough. Rip this guy. Plop. Yeah, it's interesting, Taito. I've heard like, really mixed things on Stardew Valley's fishing. I've heard some people say they love it and some people say they hate it. You think Amy is worse than Big? My Goyle, but I can understand that. Her movement's kind of strange. Like, just the way she accelerates. That said, you can do some fun things with her hammer. Anyway. Hot oh, dang, Agent 3! You're on fire! But I've got a bad feeling about... Well... I'll just go take a quick look for myself. By the way, I've been meaning to introduce you to Agents 1 and 2. Once we're all assembled, I'll bake some Krabby Cakes. Cuddle fish? No! You! It can't be! <laughs> Time to face the music, old timer! Wait! Grrr, what kind of noise is that? Stop! No! Scratch! One cuddle fish! Oh no. I mean. Captain Cuttlefish has not really been much help anyway, so like, nothing of value was lost. Wow, it's the arrow spray. I used to use the arrow spray a lot in this game before I learned how to aim. <laughs> it's a really good beginner weapon. Here, here's my advice as a seasoned Splatoon player. Um, if you're starting out, arrow spray is a great beginner weapon. Because it's very fast and very ink efficient, and it's great for covering turf. It's not the best for combat, but that's okay. It allows for fairly speedy movement, which I think is important when one is just getting used to it. Same with the splatter shot, Junior. Now I haven't really touched the arrow spray in a long time, and I find when I use it, I get annoyed with how much it shot spread out. Oh gosh, now there's no mission control. So lonely. I'm gonna have to be my own mission control, I guess. Oh, Octo Snipers. Golly, I found these things so intimidating the first time I played this game. You know, when I wasn't very good yet. Like, when you're still getting used to maneuvering quickly, they can be intimidating. Now it's like, it ain't no thing, you know? Phew. I gotta say, this is a nice game to chill with. I know it might be old hat to some people, and maybe not as interesting as the newer Splatoons, but it's nostalgic going back to it. And I think it still holds up well. And it's interesting seeing, like, how um, mechanically the games have changed between one another. 
just how the, the art style has evolved and the music has evolved. Like, I think you get a lot more um, varied tunes in Splatoon 2 and 3 single player. Like, they still have a similar vibe as to this stuff, but I think you get even a, a greater variety. Yeah, this is the first Splatoon. This is uh, the original on the Wii U, which a lot of people didn't play because who had a Wii U? Nobody. What are we doing? Let me just get in there. Okay. There we go. Heck. There we go. Phew. Yeah, they developed the look of the game this well in the first one. Splatoon's always had a really strong visual style. Hmm. Can I throw a bomb? Let it reach. Excellent. Yeah, the Wii U's name is not the best. <laughs> I feel kind of bad for it, but at least a lot of games that were stuck on the Wii U eventually got ported to the Switch, which I know is a practice some people are a fan of, but considering how poorly the console sold, it's nice that a lot of games get sort of a second chance. You know, stuff like Mario 3D World or Return to Dreamland. Is that a new title? You know what I mean. One of these days I gotta stream 3D Worlds. Yeah, the Wii U didn't even really feel like a huge upgrade to the Wii. You know, except for the, uh, the whole gamepad thing. Oh man, you can see my face doing that. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? I wish I knew how to make my voice upside down. You're holding that upside down. Oh. Agent 1 of the new Squidbeak Splatoon reporting in. Agent 2 also reporting in. We got an SOS from Captain Cuttlefish. Are you Agent 3? Don't worry. We're your new support team. Yep. We're taking over for the captain. Well, we're gonna try. But we've got to hurry, or the captain is as good as sushi! Let's roll, Agent 3. These two cousins from Calamari County won Inkopolis' first annual youth folk singing contest. Their remarkable voices earned them a standing ovation from all present and catapulted them into the spotlight. So I did mention that most Inklings have that awkward prepubescent stage where they can't quite maintain kid form, as it were, but it's shown that some can do it sooner. You know, like Callie and Marie here, or uh, Pearl. You also see a younger Pearl in a singing contest in Two's Scrolls. Although in that one, she's causing some wicked feedback with her voice. Is there one below me? Or above me. Above me, maybe? They focused entirely on the controller. You thought it was a controller for the Wii. Well, they were really proud of their, their innovation. Oh, look at them. Hair accessories. I want fancy seaweed hair clips. Oh no, I got careless. Yeah, Bluefin Depot. Wait, how many people perished uh, going into squid form on that grate? I know I've done it. I feel like like maybe even like the first time I was on this map, I accidentally went into squid form on the grate and uh, splattered myself. Very proud. I've seen many people do it since. Yeah, I miss Bluefin Depot. Again, it had an identity. I feel like I'm trespassing. 
ma'am. Miss, stop. Where is the sunken scroll? Wait, this is a weird thing, but I just remembered. Uh, I forgot. You get pushed back in the bubbler. Um, I need to. I need to clarify what uh, F U Tuesday is. To those of you who aren't familiar, it's not. It's not me saying it. It's in Splatoon. Two, um, which which jellyfish shopkeeper is it? Jelfonzo? There's Jelonzo and Jelfonzo, and I forget which one is in which Splatoon. But anyway, the jellyfish shopkeep that sells you shirts, his Tuesday shirt, I'm pretty sure it's the Tuesday shirt, has the inkling language written on it. And people have found that the inkling language um, mostly uh, has equivalents, um, like uh, Latin characters. Um, so, like each letter of the inkling language will will uh, correspond. What? I didn't even see what happened there. Did I go through the grid? I'm thinking too hard about this. Anyway. Um, uh, a letter of the Inkling language will correspond to the Latin alphabet. And people discovered that on Jelonzo, whichever one's shirt, on Tuesday says F-U in the Inkling language. Someone pulled it up on Inkopedia. If not, I can find it after. Where is the sunken scroll? I didn't get it before perishing, right? Don't, oh, wait, here we go. There we go. <laughs> when you were a kid, you thought that was how foreign languages work. I remember having a similar thought. I remember back um, in the day playing a ROM of Pokemon Green. Because I really wanted to see how much it differed from Blue. But, of course, the green ROM was in Japanese, which I did not speak a lick of, did not understand a word of, because um, I was quite small. So, I remember playing it and, you know, Professor Oak asks, asks you what your name is, and, you know, your options are uh, Kana. But I thought, oh, I bet each one of these corresponds to a letter in the Latin alphabet. So I just, you know, went from like, okay, this would be A, B, C, D, E, F, etc. And I tried putting in my name that way. And then was dismayed when I didn't have enough characters to do it. Because you only have like four. And my name is longer than that. But, you know, I, I wonder what gibberish it actually said. I guess we'll never know. Anyway. Squid Squad's new album, Fresh Kids, takes their trademark squid core sound to a whole new level. Critics call it... An oral buffet of squidiosyncratic psychedelicacy. The perfect theme for any turf war. On sale now. I feel like I should get points for saying squidiosyncratic psychedelicacy without tripping over my words. As me, the one who is very good at tripping over her own words. I love that sea anemone. I think her name is Murasaki. Sometimes I'd see uh, hosts in Splatsville, in Splat 3, of somebody saying it's Murasaki Monday with art of, of Murasaki from Squid Squad, the little uh, sea urchin. At least I think that's Murasaki. Yes, they have names. The, the fake bands all have names. They go in deep in the lore in this series, and I am a fan. Trying to write Mori in Japanese and thinking I don't have enough characters. <laughs> I mean, again, I was quite small, so I had no idea how the language worked. But I, it's, it's like you said, you know, I you think that's how it works because you have no other frame of reference. And I think for a small child, it's, I think that's a fairly clever hypothesis to make, even if it winds up being completely incorrect. Boy, I just face tanked all of that. Wait, I've already done, like, most of the single-player campaign, huh? 
How many worlds are in there? Like, am I in the second last world already? I kind of hope not. I just think I'd get, like, at least a couple streams out of this. <laughs> I mean, I could always pad it out with trying Turf War, but... Um, I'd have to connect my Wii U to the, to the network, which I can do. But... I feel like it would just be filled with hackers. I don't know... If there's any sort of hacking protection. Um, as I mentioned, I think at the tail end of Wind Waker the other week, um, that near the end of this game's lifespan, you know, before the Switch and Splatoon 2, um, I started running into hackers fairly rampantly on the online play for this game. And again, most distinctively, I would run into people that would just have infinite ink strikes. Um, that as soon as they were activated would paint the entire map in their color and they would just do it constantly and it's like well what's what is the point you know they're like there's there's no reason to play for any of us because it's a pointless endeavor and I don't even know what enjoyment the hacker is getting out of this but then I can't wrap my brain around hacking anything like that oh man can I okay it's like I hope this is an inkable wall. I also saw some slightly more, I'm gonna say, benign hacks in the sense that they would have their characters, like, go out of bounds and otherwise access parts of the stage you weren't able to. Like, jeez, I remember somebody being, like, way up in the skybox of Flounder Heights or something. You could, you could super jump up to them and then, you know, uh, check it out. Feel like you're boundary breaking. But of course, it kind of derails the match. Yeah, that's a good technique where, like, all the hackers get put in hacker jail together. So only hackers play with other hackers so they can grief each other. Is the big fluffy one providing shelter for the little fishy one? Or is the little fishy one manipulating the big fluffy one? We may never know. Clown fish and sea anemones. Specifically with regards to Annie and Mo, or the headgear shopkeeps in this game. But you can also visit in Splatoon 3 if you have the, the DLC. Which I don't blame you for not getting, because it's not really worth it right now. But once Side Order comes out... Huh, modded Minecraft community. I know that's gotta be pretty massive. Oh, Snippy Snaps! Kelly, stop trying to make Snippy Snaps happen. That is not fresh slang. It is hard not to think you just see a link out of the corner of your eye and you're like, oh no, it's one of those buy followers bots. What no? Maybe someday I'll play Minecraft. Maybe someday. For like a bit. And again, I, I mean I mean no disrespect to Minecraft. I just I don't like such open world games. I need focus. I need focus. My armor. Like I need I need a constructive goal or constructive is that the word? No, uh, I need a, a Concrete goal! I guess you construct things with concrete, but that's what I mean. I just tried to squid roll again. Oh man, I miss the power of the old Inkzuka. But I also understand why we were not allowed to have the old Inkzuka anymore. So you know, this, this level, this area, Urchin Underpass, is in Mario Kart 8's battle mode. Albeit made much larger. The scale is much bigger. I think... I tried to use a seeker. Oh, didn't press the button hard enough. Oh well. Too little, too late. Okay. 
playing with friends, playing with others, and putting goals to yourselves is how you enjoy it. And I could see that having a lot more appeal than just build things. I just get really restless and, and bored if I don't have a clear goal in mind. I remember in school... Um, I don't like talking about it because it sounds like a humble brag, and I don't mean it as one at all. But when I was plunked in the gifted program, um, what they really wanted us to do was self-directed studies. They loved self-directed studies. Um, and by that I mean they wanted us to just pick a topic and then do a presentation on it. And I hated it. It was torture for me because there's no real guidelines. Just, yeah, pick a topic and, and do, like, a report on it. You know, like, kids would always make, like, these fancy tripods with, with graphics all over them and charts. And I couldn't handle how nebulous it was. I needed clear, uh, not, not clear goals. I needed clear expectations. And I found it paralyzing to work without them. And then I get told, you're like, gee, Mori, you know, obviously you're really need to do this. Why don't you just do it? It's so easy, just do it. And I, at the time, I wasn't able to articulate why it was so difficult for me. Because I didn't have that understanding of psychology um, to properly communicate. I'm not not doing it because I'm stubborn. And I suddenly decide I hate schoolwork. It's that... If the requirements are too nebulous and I don't have clear expectations, I don't know what to do. It's like cleaning. I really struggle cleaning if I don't know exactly where to put something and exactly where to start and exactly uh, what order I should do things in. Otherwise, I get overwhelmed. Oh, does anybody else get that? Anyway, delicious food. What is this? It looks just like the proprietor of that shoe shop. Could there have been an ancient creature that consumed prawns as food? A terrifying thought indeed. Delicious. Ugh, man, I'm hungry again. Delicious ebi fudai. I'm not even, like, a shrimp person. I'm a shrimpy person, but I'm not a shrimp person. It's just, oh, it looks good. And I want it. Cruel torture. Is there anything down here? Oh, I almost walked off that. Eh. Eh. There we go. When people say just do what you like, you hear take a 16 hour nap. Yeah. Because <laughs> that, again, it was, it was torture for me and I couldn't articulate why it was torture. And then I just, you know, people thought, oh, she's just difficult. She's stubborn. She doesn't want to do it. I'm like, no, I just... My brain can't... I'd always get told, just just take the first step. It's so easy, just get it started. I think I've, I've mentioned this analogy before, is that for most people, taking the first step is just taking one step up a staircase. But for me, it's like climbing a 30-foot sheer stone wall. That, that first step is friggin' impossible! Wow. Oh yeah, decision paralysis, that's a nasty one too. Or like, uh, I need to get over there. You feel like I just need to do something? Like you get restless, you're like, I'm gonna start biting the bars of my enclosure. My brain craves stimulation, but I just nothing nothing is giving me that 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 dopamine hit. I guess nothing feels like when you, you think I want to do something, but none of the things you have available to you are interesting. Like yeah, I could read a book, I could play a game, I could do art, I could you know go for a walk, do all these things. Nothing seems interesting, but I just need to do something. Ah. You, any of you seen that comic and regrettably I don't know the original artist's account name because it's something that's been reposted and memed a thousand times 
but of the the comic of the the dog with the ball in its mouth. No take, only throw. That's the feeling. No take, only throw. Oh yeah, doing things all in one go, like that's that was my school MMO. Not my school MMO, that's a very different thing. Um but uh yeah, a lot of times I would put things off to the last minute. Just because I couldn't get my brain in gear. Why what am I doing? I need the key. It's right there and I walk past it. Wait, I hope I can I can jump back on this. Okay, we're good. We're good. Excellent. College doesn't have essays? Oh, that's... Well, I guess maybe your college didn't. I'm sure a lot of people in college have to write essays, technical reports, papers, dissertations, theses, theses. Uh-oh. Looks like you see the bomb. You know it's there. You're, you're verbally reacting to it, but you just can't get away in time. Oh. They're, they're gone already? Ladies, ladies, I'm so alone. I also just now realized that that can special I picked up, I think it's a bomb rush, but it corresponds to whatever bomb I have equipped. Oh well. The only way you're capable of writing essays is last minute panic. Oh baby, I know that feeling. Yeah, I like, well, research and looking up topics that interest me. Sometimes I just get, like, fixated on things, and then I read about it. Like, I'll just come across something, and I'll suddenly think, like, ah, oh, I need to learn about this. I have this temporary fixation on it. But, um, a lot of, like, most of the things that really capture my interest, I wouldn't want to write a school report about, like, yeah, Mori, write, write a school report about Splatoon, you know, or your knowledge of Mario, or you know, nothing useful, air quotes, useful in academic circles. Anyway, it's Black Friday every day at the Booyah Base Ultra Mega Hyper Sale. Every deal's a door buster. If you want to be the freshest squid in Inkopolis, you cannot miss this incredible shop opportunity. Oh, uh, poor one out for the poor schmo. I had to write that copy. Sometimes I encounter, like, corporate copy, and I think, is this... Was this engineered by a real person, or somebody developed in a lab? Like, surely this doesn't work on anyone. You know, like, shop opportunity, but real. In class, you had to write an essay on a mythical creature, so you chose a tanuki and spent most of it talking about Mario 3. Heck yeah! It's relevant! You know, and you can, you can argue that a video game got you to learn about another culture. Isn't that a good thing? Mario has exposed you to other cultures. Where the heck is the other kettle? Oh. <laughs> Ask and we shall receive. I am pretty sure I've told this story on stream before, but um, in high school, um, I took a psychology class once because I think psychology is interesting. Unfortunately, the teacher running the class was awful and mostly just made us watch movies. Um, not a good time. But anyway, we had a unit on personality disorders, so everybody had to get a personality disorder and then write a little paper on it, and then present it to the class. And when I had to present, I held up a blank piece of paper and very confidently BS'd my paper completely from scratch. And I got 100%. <laughs> I am a very shy individual. 
And I know you may think that's that's odd. If you're you're so shy, why are you streaming? It's different. Streaming is different. Performing is different. I've always felt very shy and awkward around other people. But performing is another can of worms. And I suppose in that case it was performing. I've often been told that I'm good at public speaking. So that might be why. We got got him. <laughs> Because I, I couldn't be bothered to write a paper. Just getting me to do schoolwork was such a struggle. Exactly, exactly. Also, hello, UFO abduction. That's exactly what it is. It's just... I think... Not having to talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, I think, makes it a lot easier for me. Because that's what really, like, burns me out and makes me feel uncomfortable, is talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, again, I'm, I'm very shy. I'm a hermit. One of the reasons I don't have a stream Discord. One of these days, maybe. Especially, you know, if Twitter continues to implode on itself. But, I also have very little social energy. And I always worry, like, I don't want people to seem like I'm brushing them off or that they, they bother me or they bore me. Just because I don't really have much bandwidth for one-on-one -on -one conversations and, again, how shy I am. Or go, I just remain a hermit forever. <laughs> so this, this is it. Streaming is, is precious Mori time. Get up here. I can make that right. There we go. Yeah, social battery burns out really fast. And I think doubly so because for my job, I talk to people for hours. You know, the expectation is that as a barista, you are sociable. And again, if you've worked customer service, you know that you, you got to put on a persona. And it gets tiresome. Not even the cool kind of persona where you steal people you steal people's treasures. Sorry again, having fun with Persona 5. I put it on Twitter, but there's a bit I got a screen cap of where I am in the story of Morgana the cat saying that money and fame don't matter. That's right, Splatfest results cancelled, the cat has spoken. Yeah. Hi, how are you? How can I make your coffee? How's your day? And then they they don't even respond to you, they just look at their phone the whole- Like, they don't even say hello or please or thank you. It's like, nothing. It's like, yeah, I had a medium coffee, two cream, like, and that's it. Anyway. Before the Great Turf War, there were amicable relations between the Inklings and the Octarians. They couldn't have dreamed that rising sea levels would force them to battle fiercely over the remaining territory. There it is, old man Yaoi. <laughs> Except they're not, they're not old here. But, Captain Cuttlefish and DJ Octavio. And this is the only time we see Octavio in humanoid form. I wonder if, if he could still do it. That would be interesting to see. I wonder if he would look as, like, emaciated as Cuttlefish does. Okay. I know I'm, like, near the end of the single player, but... Uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to go to bed for this. If I had more time, I would just get the whole campaign over with. So I guess it's gonna be kind of an awkward stream like next week. I don't know. I don't know if, if turf is good um, online or if it's just rife with hackers. Look at this sign. Beautiful. I was gonna say delicious. The bomb's delicious. The sign itself is not delicious. Don't eat the sign. Yeah, I find with socializing there's gotta be an activity. So otherwise I feel like, oh, I gotta, I gotta be charming and talkative and fun and friendly. I'm- I'm a perennial people pleaser. So I always stress myself out thinking I want everyone to feel included, I want everyone to be having a good time. Look at this microphone fish. 
But I feel like this boss was in Splat 2. Like, it couldn't have been, right? But it just, like, it, I just get this weird deja vu. Yeah, people that you trust and you get a good vibe from, that too. But even, like, people I really enjoy that I just get socially burnt out. <laughs> you missed! Morbid. I mean, the tentacles exploding in this game are so satisfying. I could switch to regular regular split blah after, that's true. But I'd have to unplug my, my Wii U from the capture card and then get my switch going in the capture card instead. And it's just like switching around so many cab cables. Ugh. He didn't accept my bomb. That's so rude. I'm trying to give you snacks. Oh. Oh, that's that's uncomfortable. I don't like that. Yeah, when you're around people that you feel like they're gonna judge you, yeah, that's that's exhausting. And getting to be yourself definitely makes a big difference when it comes to a one social battery. Another Wii U game I have. Um I got a few. I guess there's always Twilight Princess. I've only played some of that game, so, you know. More Zelda? People aren't sick of Zelda. <laughs> Mari, it's your stream. You stream what you want. Well, it's the, the, it's the, the, the HD version of Twilight Princess. That was, that was Wii U, yeah, yeah? Because it had the Wolf Link amiibo. Holy mackerel, Pancakes Agent 3! You're really good! I've seen better. If you keep this up, we'll find the great Zapfish in no time! That's great and all, but don't forget about the captain. Scritchy Scratch! Who is this? <laughs> Incopolis! <gasps> it's the final boss! Give us back the great Zapfish, you jerk! And Captain Cuttlefish! We want him back, too. Inkopolis is mine, yo! Dude, seriously, get your own radio channel. Agent 3, you gotta do something about this guy. And quick! Not like the more in-depth character conversations like we get in later Spoon games, huh? More anti-octopus weapon blueprints. Oh, it looks like a squiffer. I think that's the splatter shot. The E-Leader, the Arrow Spray, and the Squiffer. So I think it's the Splatter Shot. It might not be. It might be the Rapid Blaster. I don't know. Mm, that's true. I don't know if I'll be done with Wind Waker the next stream. Depends how fast I get the, the Triumph Forks. And how like long I can go with my hands. Okay. Um, as much as I want to finish this right now, I have to go to bed. I'm sorry. Sometimes I wish I was one of those streamers that, you know, was able to stream more than, like, just a, like a couple days every week, you know? Maybe if I get a less demanding job someday. Because, you know, I gotta spend all day talking to people. I'm wearing out my voice. Okay, I'm resting my hands. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me for some, uh, sp Splatuno. Uh, I'll, I'll work on it. <laughs> But thank you so much, everyone. Um, I'll see you on Friday for some Zelda. So stay safe, uh, take care, stay healthy, and I will catch you next time. Um, I guess when in Rome, stay fresh! <laughs>